Now let's talk about BioRed. You mentioned it a couple of times. It's one of the innovations that came out of your lab, your 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 department. Uh, tell us a little bit about w the thought process and what it does. What is it? Yeah, it's a representation. It's a it's a dummy uh, representation uh, of of a person. It uh, is actually. Uh, Built, it builds on a crash test dummy that was done, uh, developed for frontal impacts. And uh, at that time, when I started as a PhD student, that was the only available dummy, more or less, if you wanted to look in, at the rear end collision, what happened to the yeah, to the neck and the whole torso. Uh, and I soon realized that, okay, this neck uh, and, and uh, the whole spinal system is uh, not representative of how a uh, human volunteer or human person a response and interacts with the seat back and, and the head restraints. So I started by just making a new new neck and then I saw it that this is not enough. And uh, so that there my work ended as a PhD. I got my PhD, but I got the chance to continue. I got the chance to supervise two PhD students as an uh, assistant supervisor together with my uh, professor at that time. And we continue the work with support from the Swedish uh, car industry. And, and then we developed a complete torso with a spine that uh, much better represents and reproduces the, the motion of the human, yeah, the spine, the head, uh, and the interaction with the seat back. Uh, typically, how many degrees of freedom would a dummy like this have? Uh, let's say the human being has like six degrees of freedom, I guess, in, in many joints. So, some of the joints are like restricted, but... Uh, yeah, in theory, yeah, yeah. but uh, okay, th this uh, dummy is restricted, so it only moves forward, rearward, so in the sagittal plane. So it each joint has uh, three degrees of freedom, you can say. Okay. And BioRid two, what was the sort of the new thinking that you brought in in making BioRid two? Uh, so it has a completely new spinal shape and uh, the number of articulations are the same and the range of motion in each articulation is similar to or corresponds to a human being. So you get a motion if you're hit from behind your torso, let's say your spine is, is curved and when you hit from behind it sort of straightens up. And so uh, the contact with the head restraint is different compared if you would be rigid in your spine like the hybrid three dummy. And it's important to catch this uh, motion to get the right uh, impact condition or the contact conditions with the head restraint as, as well as the, the entire motion of the uh, neck. Uh, yeah, and it also has a neck that has uh, the same number of articulations, uh, vertebrae as in a human and the range of motion. Uh, the curvature of the neck is also uh, made to resemble uh, a human, uh, an average male in this case.